Well, this has been one heck of a weekend. We've had two very big, heavy-hitting bands dropping brand new albums on us. So let's dive into what used to be a dormant band of Frost with their first album in almost eight years. Falling Satellites by Frost. The band only really put out two full-length albums, Experiments in Mass Appeal and Million Town. How does Frost sound coming back into the saddle? Let's talk about the drawbacks and pitfalls of the album first before I get into it because unfortunately this album isn't quite a flawless one. The album is a little bit shaky unlike the first two releases. It has a bit of an identity crisis at hands where the first two releases really knew where they were going and almost had a clear vision of where the sound was. This one didn't quite know what it wanted to be. In some ways, it's a little bit of a warm welcome as it's covering a little bit more ground than the first two releases, but it's always shifting and it's always changing shape and it leaves the listener a little bit confused as to what direction the band wanted to go. I also feel like some of this was just because the band wasn't quite used to one another. Returning to the band are the two kind of founding fathers of the band, Jem Gottfried and John Mitchell. Jem being on keyboards and vocals, and John being on guitars and vocals as well. Joining them, we've got Nathan King on bass, taking over from John Jowett, and Craig Brussel replacing Andy Edwards on drums. And I hate to say it, but the absence of those other players are kind of felt on this album. Those filling their shoes are doing a great job, but those jam sessions in the middle of Million Town that made the album so enjoyable are now not quite as fluid and the quick playing that was found on experiments are not quite as tight or well constructed unfortunately. Also some of the songs are well boring unfortunately and this album has a lot more of those slower songs on it and not all of them really hit their mark. The slower songs are Lights Out, Closer to the Sun, and The Last Day. Both Lights Out and Close to the Sun would have felt really nicely on, say, Coldplay's Ghost Stories album. Even though I've grown to really enjoy that album, it doesn't really fit here on Falling Satellites or even in a Frost repertoire. Lights Out is rather repetitious and doesn't really go anywhere, I find. Luckily, Close to the Sun is a much stronger track with a gentle build-up to a satisfying ending. The song really isn't as heavy-hitting as I would have hoped it to be, and unfortunately that build-up does kind of just step away into the shadows to let that final chorus come through, which really softens the blow of that jam session that we had leading into it. And I think this is where Joe Satriani is featured on this album. I see that he is credited as providing a guest guitar here, and that does sound a lot like his guitar work. His presence is definitely a warm welcome, especially within this slower track, and he allows it to build up. Unfortunately, through his guitar work, he's kind of almost pushed to the side when Jem comes in with the keyboards, and I feel like that's... I don't know if that was quite the right move to do, but it does usher us through the rest of the song, so... Even those bonus tracks that I have on this album of Lantern and British Winter Times aren't all that exciting. It's not that these are terrible songs, but I have a hard time really connecting with them. I guess that's why they're bonus tracks, but unfortunately when you're listening to this album from start to finish with those bonus tracks being on there, there's a lot of false endings on this album and it really draws the listener away. Already when you have Hypoventilate kind of being a closing track and then also having a couple other tracks follow suit after that. By having those false endings there, I don't know, it draws me out a little bit. So coming into some of the not so good, not so bad aspects, the actual structure of this album is an interesting one. The first five songs on this album are pretty much standalone tracks with a few bleeding into one another's, but overall it's just like five consecutive tracks. Now this isn't a bad thing in and of its own, but those songs after the five tracks, between Heartstrings and The Last Day, feel much like they bleed together and become almost its own suite, its own identity of music. It provides a really interesting contrast, and this is what I'm talking about when the band didn't really know where they wanted to go here, because the first five songs and those last songs almost feel like two completely different albums. Now on its own, I actually enjoy this. I really like when a band leaves a big chunk of the album to create its own identity and its own thing. Other bands have tried this, and I'm looking at you, Spock's Beard, because you might want to take notes. These guys really nailed down that suite here, where each song was its own cog and its own identity, providing 
for a bigger picture. The way that they orchestrated it was very, very well. You can listen to each part of this song on its own, but when listening to it in the grander scheme of things, it provides a much more enjoyable listen. No song really outshines another on this, and each one lends a hand to what the next will bring. So coming into the things that I really enjoyed about this album, because there are a number of moments on this album that really shine strong. Overall, the songs are really well constructed, all things considered. The album starts off pretty strong with first date and numbers, and I gotta geek out a little bit, I love when a band has the opening track related to the last track, this one being first day and the last one being the last day. But the energy that Numbers brings is what I expected from Frost, and it never lets up. Gems playing on the keyboards lays down a great framework for himself to play around as well as everybody else in the band. I think the most interesting track is Tower Block, the third track on this album. I love that midsection, almost a dubstep synthesized skipping kind of a thing, where if this was on like a CD, you know, I could almost envision somebody shaking the CD and the CD skipping. I love how the root remains constant throughout this entire portion of the song, but it never quite gets it right. And I like that tension that it builds. I wish more bands would do this. But it's weird because when the skipping stops and we get ushered into the plane, the plane itself is really, really good and I love that plane, but because it's so sudden, it almost catches me off guard and it's really hard to get into it. You know, there's no buildup, you're just there and maybe people will enjoy that and I know a number of people do enjoy that, but for me, I like a little bit more warning before I get into the jam session. So. Yeah, that, that took me down a little bit on this song, but still, that interlude and the full playing was just a great, great way to structure a track. So Heartstrings we already know from the Rockfield Files and also being the leading single from this album, so I already knew a lot of what I was getting into and I love that energy, I love that jam session, this is why we're coming to Frost, and I love that it really kicks off that suite. A lot of this gets revisited within kind of that jam session we have near the end of it. Nice Day For It revisits that theme and really takes it for a walk and really sees what we can do with it. Really though, I have to say one of my favorite parts on this entire album is the track The Raging Against the Dying Light Blues in 7-8. This has such a great jam session near the end. You've got this really great foundation of that deep sound with the whizzing lead going around it. It creates a really interesting almost power dynamic and a power struggle within that balance. And the subtle play out at the end is really what caps this song off for me. The drumming within this section actually provides me with a really great treat. And it's showing that Craig is picking up where Andy has left off and that seamless transition into nice day for it just, it puts that icing on the cake so, so well. whole suite to a close, we have that hypoventilation, which is, this provides us with that great atmosphere. It's weird that this isn't the ending and we have one more song going on because I feel like it provides such a great kind of closure to the overall track that providing anything afterwards is a little bit of a misstep, but I still enjoyed the final song of Last Day enough that I can forgive it for that. But just that soundscape that's provided within hypoventilate is just... It's so juicy and so great. So overall, this album is a valiant effort by Frost and a warm welcome back for me. In my opinion, it's not quite as good as their first two releases, but 
I think that might just be the boys finding their way again and really coming into their own. I'll have to say download this album and enjoy it with a good pair of headphones. It still deserves to be on your computer or playlist. And who knows, I could see this album being a very great sleeper album as well. And that's about it for Falling Satellites by Frost. What did you guys think? Did you love it? Did you hate it? Whatever your thoughts, let me know by commenting below. And thank you guys so much for watching. It's been a blast diving into this album and revisiting a really great band. You guys are definitely the best. And until next time, notes out.